Thank you very much for being with me today. Really appreciate the time because time matters, uh, the time that you are taking with me. Uh, so I thought that I would start with you actually as part of the interview. So speaking a little bit about who you are, where you come from and uh, what has been your journey uh, towards the data practice that you are running right now. So let's start with where are you based? Uh, and, uh, you know, let's start with that. Oh, thank you. Nice to have, ni nice to be here. Thanks for having me uh, and happy new years. Happy new year uh, to you. <laughs> Uh, I'm based in Iceland. We're located in Reykjavik. Uh, my background, my personal background is in IT. I'm a, a com computer scientist. I studied in a university of Akureyri, which is a town up north of Iceland. I lived there for many years. Uh, I, actually, I actually did my college years there. I did my university years. I met my wife there. We got our first child there and etc. and etc. And I even participated in a software development company there as well. Uh, a couple of years back, <clears throat> we decided to change things up. I wanted to move from the software industry and, and, and quit as a project manager. I was that, that was my last role there. And But without moving too far from IT, uh, a previous employer <clears throat> of mine uh, had, a lot, uh, had a really interesting story to tell. Uh, and, a, and an amazing group of people, which I joined, participated there as well for seven years as well. I managed to grow into a really nice position there as well. Uh, but last year, 2021, uh, was a difficult year for many people, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. I finished my master's in the beginning of that year and approached one of my former colleagues uh, in the spring. Yeah, in the spring. And we were three guys with a background in engineering and, 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 and IT, decided to start Maven. And Maven today is an IT consultancy firm where our focus is on modernizing data and using data in today's industries. Uh, and that can be our focus and our, our core, our beginnings were in the space of business intelligence, reporting and etc but it has grown a lot in various other fields just in those few eight months that we've been operating uh, we have a tremendous uh, appreciation for our clients they've ha shown huge trust in us in approaching new ideas new ways of thinking and new ways of doing things and we've been so uh, so lucky uh, to be able to learn from our uh, journey these fa past few months and have now grown a, well, one of our strong sites is, is, is cloud-based uh, architectures and mm -hmm. with focus on Asia. And we've now managed to build up data structures which don't connect to databases. So that is pretty cool. And that's where we are today. <laughs> not In a bad, quick story. Not a bad journey, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, obviously, you've been in the space for quite a while uh, and you have a wealth of knowledge about the, the Icelandic markets um, uh, in general. Um, so, my perception, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that the digitalization aspect of things in Iceland has sped up quite a bit over the past maybe five to ten years. So, could you speak of industries that are still kind of being digitalized uh, what type of trends do you see in, in the Icelandic market or in general actually i'm focusing in iceland because you're based there but uh, what are the trends that you see from a digitalization standpoint uh, that you find interesting digitalization yeah and cloud Ooh. architecture yeah, yeah and cloud architecture what you're doing mm -hmm. in manufacturing is pretty cool uh, mm -hmm. we, are, we, are, we are helping a couple of companies that are all protesters in the idea of how to digitize uh, some of our pro, uh, 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 production, uh, production lines, supply chains. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are doing that in manufacturing productions and we're doing such in, uh, in skincare production and etc. And those areas are pretty fun. Those, those areas, are, I've never been in them. I've been in them in the standpoint of data and an analyze perspective but not as hands-on in IT. How can IT help us? And what you're doing with some of them are, are, are pretty cool stuff. Uh, 
just as informative, just as the, the approach of we are we're talking about industry that are building huge blocks of uh, stuff, material stuff for um, building productions. Mm-hmm. And, and, and there are building companies here in Iceland that ordered these huge structures to be moved across uh, locations. And it has happened that there are informations that get lost in the production line. Where is it? When is it? And even so that it's been standing for quite quite some time without being picked up. Mm-hmm. So what we're doing in that, that sense, that is new to me. I'm not saying it's new to everybody. Uh, but but it, it's a new trend in our perspective that the production, which is a lot of hands-on space, is moving into digitized aspects. Uh, and that's pretty cool. Uh, what we're also seeing that we, 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 we've been doing so with other uh, companies in en- uh, energy dis- distribution mm-hmm. uh, is the uh, the smart smart meters. Mm-hmm. That's also an aspect that we're, we're working with as well. We did so with a... Uh, we, sorry, I'll have to take that back. I did so in with my former employer. Uh, we did a lot of reporting and analyze on on real-time data. No, of not real-time data, on flow of data from these smart meters, which have 15-minute uh, aggregated information. The information were not li- real-time. Uh, I'll talk about that in a few seconds. Uh, and... There are companies now, larger energy, energy distributors, that are going into this space as well, setting up smart meters for every uh, energy consumer in Iceland. That's a pretty cool thing. But what that actually is opening today, and what's happening with the cloud space, is that there are these, uh, we're getting infrastructure as a service, and we're getting solutions, resources as a service with the cloud-based uh, options. That mm-hmm. the, the the near real time and real real time is the cool thing, <laughs> and it's getting and it's 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 that space which is growing more and more, and that's not focusing on an industry or a vertical. Uh, and with those capabilities, getting really 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 close to real time and even real time you start to get, okay, what if we can have predictive? Well, how can we go beyond real time? How can we start seeing things? And that space is completely new to us. And that space with the cloud architecture and cloud capabilities and all of those infrastructure that we're building up today, this space is getting really interesting. All right. So yeah, let me recap. I'm, I'm, uh, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm working for Time Extender, but that doesn't mean that I'm a specialist or a technical person. So just let me recap. So you've been working in supply chain, uh, and you see that as a trend for larger companies. Yes. And you've been uh, playing with IoT and uh, and uh, smart sensors. Yes. And you see that the future is predictive analytics uh, yes. based on that specific data. Okay, okay. So I'll summarize that correctly. <laughs> That's Brilliant. Um, great. So. Uh, when, when, when I look at Iceland again in general, so many of the news obviously right now I've been working in time extender for a year or so, and data management has become something uh, important <clears throat> to my life, as you can imagine. And since like Iceland has sped up again quite a bit over the, the, the past few years, you mentioned a number of indus- industries. Um, w- what are the things in terms of when you approach you know, a client uh, or a potential client and you start to talk to them? Uh, about their issues with data, what are the top three things that you see classically when you start talking to them? Um, Today? That are, yeah, yeah, yeah. Today is team and capabilities. Okay. And, it come, uh, uh, and, and, and the idea of or not, and it, it's funny to say, but it's also, it's, yeah, t- t- team and capabilities is one aspect of the, of, of the same, same thing, maybe, is that the people aspect, in general, and the need for people enjoying what they're doing, and how can we correlate our work to what we like, is starting to look because people get tired really quickly uh, in any sense of only doing some uh, maintenance stuff over and over and over again. How can we how can we 
how can we make it as such that our job is interesting even though we have the majority of time is maintenance right I, and and sorry I, I, it's it's maybe it's the soft talk in me i don't know but uh, because we had some baby talks a couple of a couple of minutes ago uh, but <laughs> <laughs> but 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 the idea is that it's it, it it comes down to making the job interesting even though it's number on a sheet on a spreadsheet uh and what we see and what we've analyzed with a couple of our clients is that uh, um and uh, Enter, uh, what's it called? Um, in Iceland, it's a ni- niche couple. And now, entrepreneurship and uh, yeah. I- 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 uh, invention idea, like the idea building. Uh, and, um, mm-hmm. That is what people really, really, really like to do. I'm going to translate the word so I'll have it correctly. Uh, I even have to. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Innovation was the word I didn't have on my, on my lips. Innovation, mm-hmm. idea. innovation is what what you need to to, to build up and al- and allow the team to be in innovation spirits. That makes things interesting, and that's what the cloud also does. It it enables you to do those things quickly and shutting it down and figure out if it works or works. If not, there's no big investment. There of course is investment. There are no big investments in infrastructure or anything. So you can just start playing, fiddle with it. Okay, it doesn't work, you can throw it out. So there are like innovation, keeping the innovation growing so people like what they're doing. Right. So but it comes down to people basically to manage your own talent, right? So yeah, and giving them a space to be creative. Yeah, that, that makes sense to me. All right. Um, so tell me a little bit about Maven's philosophy and your motto and your slogan. Uh, which I, I think uh, we talked about this uh, for a little while, and I might bring an anecdotal data about this maybe later on. But uh, if you can talk about your philosophy and, and your roadmap, so in eight months you have accumulated so much knowledge, uh, you know, trial and error. You have run a fantastic campaign recently where you have got a lot of uh, applicants to you to your company. Um, so we were discussing that before the interview and. Uh, so I just want to know, you know, with, you talk about milestones constantly. Uh, I know this for a fact. So, uh, so let's start with the, the Maven philosophy and then bring down the, the roadmap, so to say. What, what are the milestones that you have hit? Well, philosophy is, is, is pretty fun. Uh, we, we, what came across in our uh, strategy planning in the beginning, uh, the, 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 uh, the word knowledge people, came across again and again in any aspect of our thought process. And we value the time that we spend doing knowledge building uh, and how we come across knowledge, how we learn came again and again and again. And so our background is in data. So we tried to figure out how could we correlate those two things together. We value team building and we value team building a lot. And team building is really correlated to knowledge building as well, because you get an intellectual idea. So knowledge building comes from the, the idea of people working together to gather new information and rather new knowledge. So it all comes down to specifically those aspects. The word we, in our slogan, we build knowledge with data. We is the correlation directly to teams building as an Icelandic, it's scurpen, which is co- directly correlated with innovation. So building mm-hmm. is come to new building, new innovation. So that directly to innovation, uh, knowledge is of course what you can gather. We are knowledge people. We like learning, learning new things, knowledge. We, we gather knowledge from our missteps. we we'll gather knowledge from our things that we do together. So we, as the team, Build as in innovation, knowledge as in what we do and how we do it, and with data is of course the core of our 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 uh, our company. And what we've allowed us to do as well is that we build knowledge with IT or with tech. We build knowledge with people. We build knowledge with you. We build mm-hmm. knowledge together. So mm-hmm. that's how we came across to it. So it, our slogan is pretty much directly correlated to our values in team innovation 
and and, and knowledge building. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> and uh, yeah, okay. And then uh, uh, remind me again: there are five people working in the company right now. Is that correct? Yes, we are five. Yeah. We, and, we have uh, five hired the six, mm -hmm. and the seventh is here as well soon as well. So we are about to be seven. That's fantastic. Uh, so you have achieved a number of milestones. What is ahead? What, what do you think uh, wow. you want to achieve over the next 12 months? So for the next if, we have months. This, if we have this conversation next year, you know, I'm going to hold you accountable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we did our, uh, we did our um, strategy planning again by the end of last year, where we reviewed what we did in the beginning our, of our journey and, and what did we really, really set up to do. And, 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 and we even went over what did we say we wanted to do, what did we really do, and etc. and etc. We even did our, we did some uh, uh, no, uh, analytical uh, uh, targets as well. And we seem to meet them in many, many aspects. Of course, we have revenue goals, and of course, we have people goals, and of course, we have cost efficiency, mm -hmm. and etc. and etc. But, uh, our biggest goal for the year, uh, our most interesting goal for the year, was to find a data science project that we could really focus on. We aren't in any data science today. We've been in strategy, we've been architecture, we've been in analytical, we've been in reporting and data warehousing and etc. We even got done some uh, uh, integration projects as well. So we're building APIs and etc., which is a really cool. I can talk about that for ages because it's fun to see how, how, how the web industry and how the data industry is coming together. Yep. Another talk. But we wanted a data science project. We wanted to dip our toes into data science projects. We wanted to do those machine learning algorithms. We wanted to try to see if we could do it. Is it an aspect? Because what all we've been talking about is that the, the, the main goal is we want the data to tell us something that they don't show us in aggregated numbers. Uh, it sounds, yes, 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 of course, that's of course feasible. But we want the data to be telling us something that we don't really know and don't, don't we, don't, what we really, uh, what we are not expecting. So how can we do that? That is, of course, an event-driven attributes. So particular events should show us a trend and etc real-time analytics and predictive analytics from stories and attributes and are uh, etc and etc from, from from everywhere we already have the project and it's only the 7th of january <laughs> so you have to you need another milestone otherwise it doesn't make sense <laughs> exactly. Exactly. we got the project in the new years and we That's were like it, it actually is we yeah. weren't expecting it so quickly because, uh, yeah, we, we, we still have to figure out. I, I, we've been talking about it for ages that we are doing this platform because of that and blah, blah, blah. We want to build things in the aspect because our main goal is always to, we are making your data platform, AI and machine learning ready. Mm. Show me. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, congratulations. Um... <laughs> That's, that's all I have to say. Um, there, there is one thing, of course, I mean, you, you've been, uh, you have a history with, with Time Extender, right? Um, so, if I can basically focus on the last part of the interview uh, on this aspect. So, when, when did you hear the first time uh, about Time Extender? So, how long ago? Because <laughs> um, we've been in business for 16 years now, so. Yeah, uh, I've heard about it way back. Uh, let's say around 2015 at the least, mm -hmm. uh, 14 or 15, 2014 or 15 was like, I, I started in business intelligence and data space in 2013. So in 14, 15, around that time, I was starting to hear about it and people were telling me about it here in Iceland that they're using it. But it was in 2016, I think it was in April, rather, yeah, April 2016 or something. Uh, we had a, uh, we had a, 
Yeah, it was in the beginning of 2016 when my former employer applied as a partner to to become a time extender partner. Uh, main there there were a couple of reasons. Uh, there was a shift in uh, in focus, and there were was also the uh, requirements for clients. Mm-hmm. Uh, and from that aspect, as I was grow, growing in, uh, internally, maybe it was later. G- give me a second. I'm trying to recap. Sure. 2000, uh-huh. 2006, 2016 sounds even too too early. It could have mm-hmm. been 2018, I think even. Okay. 2017. Let's say 2017. Let's meet in the middle. <laughs> so, <compromise>. and, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's talk about somewhere in there. In somewhere there. Somewhere around 2017-ish uh, is when I become a product manager within my former employer. Mm-hmm. Uh, around the product, so as the partner became, as my, as we came, became time the partners, I was responsible for correlation. I became the tech specialist, and so on and so on. And from there, my, uh, of course, interest, knowledge, usage started growing, mm. and it's grown ever since. I mean, we've held classes we've held courses we've had roundtable events we've had clients using it we have an etc and etc we've come mm-hmm. to you we've, uh, we've uh, showed up for your partner event in 2019 wasn't it yeah no 20 20, 20. Mm-hmm. uh and yeah that's from there it kind of was pushed on me but Right. <laughs> well, sorry, but I'm grateful that, that it happened, actually. <laughs> uh, the one thing that I wanted to ask you as a follow-up question, I suppose, is, uh, of course, uh, it was assigned to you back in the day. Then you basically leave your former employer, go to university, and then a few months after you finish, or as you were finishing your master's, you knock in the door of time extender <laughs> once again. Uh, so my question is, why did you do that? I, I guess you know why did you uh, become a, a time extender partner after your experience? And what are the probably the three highlights uh, of the of the partnership uh, program that we have established that you think are more valuable to you and your organization, of course? Being in the space of uh, of as being a service provider and focusing on service. Uh, it's really good to have that base as a, as a, for, for the product and being able to to have a product as a, as part of your revenue, of course, as, as your revenue stream. Uh, so product sales is really good and having those, uh, the subscription model is brilliant for a company in this space as a start. Uh, we, we don't need to hide about around that. But mm-hmm. of course, we, we have a, some part of our philosophy is that uh, uh, we see things in such a way that, well, it's not, it's it not, yeah, it's, it's a cool, we see it as such that low code is, will become and is becoming mainstream. Uh, and we collect, connect that again to people. Uh, we are seeing there is a trend among uh, generations of people that are coming onto the job market that they are, they won't stop for a long time with per employer as we, maybe you and me and other, our other generation did before. We see the trend that people are, uh, what my journey through university showed that people are only showing up for three, maybe four years. So how are you going to, how are you going to have a knowledge? How are you going to share, how are you going to keep the knowledge that an employer shows up with, without, uh, without too much training and maintenance and documentations and, and all of those people aspects that you need to share the information too much. That is through low code. So in the space of IT, low code aspect is will support you switching out and, 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 and acco- um, accommodate for those people coming in, coming out type of thing. Right. Mm-hmm. So there are those two aspects. Of course, revenue is one of the parts. Low code is another part. The third option was that one of our clients actually just asked us to be. <laughs> well, that's, that's a good option. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Um, yeah, so 
I suppose I'm, I'm going to wrap up uh, the interview now. It's been 30 minutes, which is what I was aiming for, more or less. Um, if you can tell me, so if you had, and this is a, a very silly question that I like asking, generally speaking, but uh, if you had all the money in the world, all the power in the world, all the knowledge in the world, and I have to say this, all the, the data in the world, <laughs> what would you do? A robot that doesn't make me doesn't make uh, make us all feel uh, safe, good, and happy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I, uh, well, it, it's funny to say one of my idols is of course Elon Musk mm -hmm. uh, and what he's been doing and, and and his journey through all of his uh, entrepreneurships is brilliant. And just to be able to do a touch of what he has been doing in some aspect, space, energy, reusable, uh, I don't know, I love cars and etc. and etc. If I would manage to do at least one of those parts that he's been doing, I would be satisfied, even though if I had all the powers in the world. Fair enough, that's fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> all right, sir. Thank you so much for letting me your time. Thank you so much for being a partner, of course. Uh, I'm super looking forward to your roadmap this year, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to hear about it. So uh, have a good day ahead, and talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Same to you. Thank you.